We're back with more on MDEA. Last video we talked about the pros, the good stuff on MDEA. Today, we gotta discuss the negative side, the dark side, when MDA gets in a bad mood, okay? What are the things that can go wrong, and how can we manage it? Stay tuned for the disadvantages of MDEA. Welcome to the Experts Network. Welcome back to the Experts Network. My name is Ben Spooner. I'm a principal engineer with Aiming Experts and today we're discussing part two of our topic on MDA, the pros and cons of MDEA. Last video we went through the pros of MDA. There are definitely some good pros of MDA. It doesn't degrade uh, in the presence of CO2 or COS. It doesn't even pick up CO2. We can slip CO2. That's a huge advantage to a lot of you guys. Um, you, if you run it at its nice high strength of 50% or so, 45-50%, A is non-corrosive. Okay, beautiful. And B, we can pick up a lot of H2S so we don't need to circulate as much. Okay, lots of potential advantages to MDEA. Operationally though, there's a lot of negatives, there's a lot of disadvantages, and that's what we gotta discuss today. Okay, those disadvantages, it foams easier. It's more sensitive to temperature and lean loading. It corrodes easier when we have heat stable salts. Okay, corrodes easier when we have heat stable salts. And it's not very good for liquid liquid treatment. So this affects a lot of refineries and gas plants treating NGL. So let's discuss those four disadvantages in a little bit more detail. Now, as far as foaming goes, okay, foaming, uh, MDA is, is sensitive to contamination, more so than other amines, okay? A couple reasons why. One, it's already got a lower surface tension, okay, than DEA or MEA. And, and if you watch our video on foaming available on our YouTube channel, we discuss a lot more about the importance of surface tension. But what we want in an aiming plant is a nice high surface tension. It prevents bubbles from forming. Now, as we progress through the, I guess, the uh, invention of amines, we started, we have this MEA molecule right here, just got this one little ethanol arm. So there's two hydrocarbon molecules, that's it, okay? The rest of it's nitrogen and hydrogen. As time went on and we got to DEA, what we did is we replaced one of those labile hydrogens with two ethanols, okay? So now we have one, two, three, four hydrocarbon molecules on the DEA um, overall molecule. So it does have a higher solubility to hydrocarbon than MEA did. Like attracts like in the chemistry world. So DEA picked up more hydrocarbons, which more affected its surface tension. And then finally, we get to MDEA, where we've replaced that last labile hydrogen with yet another hydrocarbon. So now we have five hydrocarbons built into the MDEA molecule. This means it's gonna pick up more hydrocarbons out of your gas or out of your LPG system, okay? Which means its surface tension is gonna be even more affected. We are more likely to have foaming on the bottom couple trays of our MDEA absorber than we are DEA or MEA. So what do you do about that? Well, it just means that your care and attention has to be taken up a notch when you're talking about MDEA. We have to have to have good feed gas preparation. You know, uh, the, the coalescing filter industry has skyrocketed thanks to MDEA. <laughs> they used to have coalescing filters in the 60s and 70s when everyone was on DEA, but they certainly, certainly do need them now, especially gas plants. We have to pay more attention to our lean amine quality. Make sure it's going in as clean as possible because the bottom line with MDA, just it takes less contamination to push through over the edge and make it foam than other amines. So the lean amine has to be very clean and clear using proper particle filters, activated carbon, all that good stuff. So foaming, one of the major disadvantages of MDEA. Another disadvantage, and it's huge, okay, it's huge, is the sensitivity of MDA to temperature and lean loading. All right, a lot of the big, 
proponents of MDA are going to say, oh, it regenerates easier. Okay, it takes less energy to regenerate. Well, although that is true, it does not hold on to H2S and CO2 as hard in the regenerator as other amines. Um, at the same time, you need to regenerate it to much lower lean loadings or it won't work over in the absorber. It won't pick up H2S. So we need low lean loadings and you got to really be careful on lean amine temperature. About 50 degrees Celsius or 120 Fahrenheit is like the maximum lean temperature. You can inject MDA into an absorber and still expect it to adequately absorb and remove H2S. Okay, other amines you can go on, you can go to higher temperatures and they'll still work. MDA starts to uh, really lose sweetening efficiency at that at that 50 Celsius, 120 degree mark. There are exceptions, you know, a, a really high pressure absorber or an ultra low lean loading, you may be able to push that temperature limit a little bit, but MDA without a doubt, a lot more sensitive. And we're seeing a lot more plants, especially these large plants in the Middle East, are putting in propane chillers as their lean amine coolers rather than traditional aerial cooler. Um, because in high ambient conditions, you just can't guarantee you would cool that amine 12 months of the year. So more sensitive to operating parameters. Next disadvantage, corrosion when we build up heat stable amine salts. So MDA by itself, not corrosive, even at high strength, you know, go for it, ramp up the strength. But when you build up heat stable amine salts in the amine, things can go wrong, okay? Because MDA, a fairly weak base to begin with, is the weakest of all of the amines. And if we react it with an acid that's strong enough to get through the regenerator, so therefore meets the definition of heat stable, um, it might not be heat all the way stable. There are heat like mostly stable, depending on what that acid anion is. One of the most common ones we see in amine systems is formate, which is a medium strong acid, okay? So what can happen in MDEA, is if you build up enough of this formate in your amine, it will, come loose from the amine in the reboil that will disassociate. It basically regenerates out of the amine no different than H2S and CO2 does. It just waits until we're in the hottest part of the system, which is a reboiler. So then that formate starts to make its way up with the steam. But as we go up in the regenerator and the temperature cools down, the formate condenses and goes back with the liquid. So it never leaves the top of the regenerator with the rest of the acid gas. Instead, you sort of form this bubble. You build up the concentration of acids inside the regenerator. Now, we don't know how high that level is getting. All we know is what's in the amine coming out of the reboiler because that's what we're sampling and that's what we're analyzing. So the idea is if we're at 2.5% in our lean amine out of the reboiler, it's kind of anybody's guess what it is inside the regenerator, but it's definitely going to be higher. And we've for sure seen a lot worse corrosion related to heat-stable salts in MDEA units. So about 2.5% by weight, heat-stable amine salts or bound amine, some people call it, that equates roughly to about 12,000 ppm of acid anions if you add up the ppms of your formate acetate, etc. Other amines, you can go higher, but not on MDEA. So that's a disadvantage. Uh, finally, okay, finally the disadvantage is when we're talking about liquid-liquid treatment. Most refinery systems have at least one liquid-liquid treater built into their family of amine contactors. You might have 15 or 20 in total and two or three of those are liquid-liquid. Well, because of those liquid-liquid treaters, we got to cut back on our amine concentration, okay? We cannot combine a viscous high-strength amine with a hydrocarbon liquid and expect those two to merge together and then separate properly, okay? They'll merge together, no problem. They just don't separate very well. So when our aiming concentration is too high and our kind of cutoff is about three centipoise, we found three centipoise is sort of the maximum viscosity you want your aiming to be going into a liquid liquid treater. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of amine loss. The amine will go with the treated LPG and vice versa, you'll have a lot of hydrocarbons going with your rich amine because the two just don't separate very well, all right? Very, very inefficient operation. And if you don't have a good water wash or separator unit after your uh, liquid liquid treater, you wind up with all those that amine going into your caustic scrubber. You deactivate the caustic a lot faster, wind up having to replace your caustic way more frequently. So you got to keep the amine concentration down to around 35 to 37 percent 
when we're injecting that amine into a liquid liquid treater. If we have other gas treaters on that same system, it now lowers their efficiency as well. We need to compensate for the low amine strength by increasing the circulation rate, and that kills right away a lot of the potential advantages of MDEA which are the lower circulation rate at the higher strength, lower reboiler duties, all of that goes away when we introduce liquid-liquid treatment. There is a second disadvantage of using MDA in, in liquid-liquid treatment, and that is it really doesn't pick up COS, uh, or for that matter, mercaptan, basically at all. We measure the feed and the treated LPG, or feed and treated NGLs of these liquid-liquid treaters all the time, and when we're talking about an MDA system, you generally see the same amount of COS in and out, okay? Compared to DEA, DGA, MEA, those amines do remove a certain amount of those other sulfur species besides H2S. And that also helps us uh, or dramatically affects the life of the downstream caustic scrubber. If that caustic is now having to re remove a lot more sulfur species than it did on other type of amine, that is for sure a disadvantage of MDEA. So be careful with MDEA in terms of foaming, heat stable salt related corrosion, uh, temperature and lean loading, as well as when using it in liquid liquid treatment. Hopefully these tips give you guys some food for thought. That's it for today's expert network. Those are the points we wanted to get across. There's a lot more detail uh, that we could go into in each one of these. So please contact us if you have any questions. Um, continue to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, over a thousand subscribers. We're very excited about that. Thank you for your support and join us again for the next Experts Network.